So here at our place, our live streaming setup is fairly sophisticated and has grown and changed over time. Uh, we actually started with one platform uh, from a company that no longer makes or supports that platform. So we spent our summer actually transitioning to a whole new platform for managing like our video switching and our live streaming um, and all of that. I've been asked a couple of times in the comments from my other videos uh, for people who are starting from scratch or are maybe just doing something really simple like a webcam um, hooked up to a laptop to stream with. Um, if they want to step up to something more, what should they do? So I decided to mock up this. Um, <clears throat> which is if I were starting today uh, and looking to do uh, a fairly simple live streaming setup, but something that needed to have a higher uh, production value. So something like for churches for doing worship um, or, you know, maybe even, you know, some, some sports like at the high school level, um, this would be a good setup for, or community performance spaces and venues, uh, you want to get into that. Um, and including even like local governments. Uh, so a lot of local government, um, school boards and town boards, um, city councils, things like that are live streaming now and they want to get a little bit more sophisticated in what they're doing than maybe just the one camera in the back of the room. If I were in that place um, and wanted to invest some money, um, this is pretty much what I would buy and I want to now walk you through each piece and tell you why it is. First thing you're going to need, of course, is cameras. Um, and if you watch any of my videos about cameras, you will know I will tell you this is where you spend your money, right? Because it doesn't matter, um, you know, how good or quality the components downstream are. If the cameras aren't quality, if they're not getting you good color uh, and good resolution with really good zoom um, from the beginning, it doesn't matter how good everything is down the line. So the first thing you're going to do is decide how much money you're going to spend on your camera, and it is going going to be probably will be the most expensive thing you will buy. You can go, um, and of course, I like PTZ cameras. I like them because you can stash them um, uh, out of the way. You can mount them on the wall. Um, you can even hang them upside down. <laughs> um, so they can be out of the way and you can also, uh, but then you can still control them. I mean, anytime you put a fixed camera in place, you're gonna figure out that the angle isn't quite right and if it's up high, then you're gonna get out the ladder and it's just gonna be a pain in the butt. These things are really amazing because they let you just put them somewhere and then ignore them um, uh, for, you know, and, and, and still be able to adjust and, and change what's going on. Okay, so you're gonna want a PTC camera and I'm gonna suggest you start off with two. Um, Mostly because moving a PTZ camera between its shots um, is actually really difficult to do well. And so when you have two, you can be positioning one while you're broadcasting from the other one and then just switch back and forth. So if you're gonna go PTZ, I think the minimum is two. All right, and then you have a choice from there. You've got a fairly basic um, camera like this one. This is actually the, uh, the camera that launched this channel. Um, I made a video about this one. It was the first video I ever made and it got really, really popular for some reason. Um, so here we are <laughs> talking more about cameras. Um, but you can go to basic camera like this, you're going to spend $600, $650, you know, on something like this. Um, I actually wouldn't buy this one. Um, this is an older model at this point. Um, Smart AV um, is a okay company, uh, but I would really point you at my review of the new Fomaco um, line of cameras and say from an image quality perspective especially, um, they have some pretty nice features going on with them uh, and their new firmware is really nice and makes setup even simpler um, than it can be with some of these other cameras. So I really like, um, so I, I would go that way, the Fomaco, if you're going to do a cheaper 1080 um, you know, just standard HD camera. So we've got that option here. Um, you know, you, yeah, there you go. Um, the other option um, is to go ahead and step up and do a 4K camera. And in that world, these Honey Optics um, are really nice. Um, we run two of these in production um, right now as sort of our main front cameras. Um, this is their 20X zoom. These are both 20X zooms. Um, this one has NDI, um, and when you step up to that 4K level, you usually get a lot of other bonus features with it, um, including NDI, which is the kind of new up and coming standard for 
controlling and capturing video. Um, nothing I'm going to show you today actually uses NDI, but it's nice to have and it's nice to know that you have it there if you want. So even if you get the cheaper version, go with like the Fomico, even their cheaper one for like $800, they have one that supports NDI. I would get it because you might need it down the road. Um, you know, these ones are sitting, I think, right around 2100. Um, and while I'm sure they probably look similar, um, they have a lot of distinctions um, where they matter. And of course, where they matter the most is in the image sensor. So I would, if you were interested in the Honey Optics, I would look at my, cam my video on that because it really um, dives into the differences between these image sensors um, and why having the bigger image sensor may be worthwhile, even if you're not going to be broadcasting it for K, which most people don't. It's also nice just to have 4K for future proofing. But again, you're spending a good bit more money um, on something. Uh, but you also want to spend money once and you want to have it for years and years. Um, and so stepping up to the bigger camera may be the way to go. But I would get two PTZ cameras, okay? And then you're going to need a way to control them. You can control them with the remotes they come with, um, which is a little bit awkward. And then you have to have a line of sight because it's like a TV remote, right? You, and it works like a TV remote. So you've got to be able to, the remote has to be able to, the camera has to be able to see the remote. Um, if you want to actually truly remotely control your PTZ, you want a control board. Um, this is the Fomico. I also reviewed this. There's a video about that. Um, so this is a good control board. There's another one, but these are, again, kind of, these are a little spendy. These run about 500. Um, there's another one in the link below, which is the one we actually use every day um, here where we are. And that one's closer to like 300. Um, and there, there, there's some differences. This one, from an operator perspective, is a little easier to use. I like it. It's got the quick, you know, quick buttons to cycle between the cameras you're controlling um, right there. The other one um, actually has a preview screen built into it, which is also nice. So kind of a preference thing there and how much money you want to spend. Really what you want to do is you want to have a dedicated controller. Um, okay, so now we've got two cameras. We've got a dedicated controller. I have no idea why that's flicking on and off. I'm pretty sure it's the TV, um, not, not the camera. So I'm, 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 I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay, but now you actually have to do something with it. And so you have two tasks that you need to do um, once you've got cameras and a way to control them is one, you need to be able to switch between the cameras um, and, and which one you're actually showing on the screen you know, that you're actually broadcasting from. And you also need to stream it somewhere. Oh, and I guess there's a third task too. You got to mix your audio in. Um, and that's where Blackmagic with their ATM Mini just blew everybody out of the water. Um, these cameras all output um, several different video signals, but the one most people use is HDMI. You're very familiar with HDMI. It what, it's what um, comes um, uh, from the back of your uh, you know, TV, um, but you got to get that HDMI into a computer. So previously what you would do is you would buy an HDMI capture box um, that, that takes the HDMI signal in and turns it in usually like USB or something, um, and then the computer can see it. A good quality capture box is going to run you two or three hundred dollars. The ATM Mini is three hundred dollars, and it does that job and so much more. This will actually take up to four different HDMI sources, which is what you're going to want. One for camera, so we've got a couple different cameras hooked up. You can see we've got camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. They're not really pointing at anything much different, so it's not going to be a huge difference. So we've got two cameras hooked up, camera one, camera two. The third input can be the input from your computer, from your slideshow. Um, so you can mix your slideshow mix into here um, as well. And then the fourth one can be a third camera or whatever you want it to be, or just not use it. It's fine that way too. Um, but now we have a way to use and switch between our two cameras with a push of a button. Super simple. Um, the ATM Mini comes uh, in many varieties. This is the cheapest one. This is the $300 version. Um, it comes with two microphone inputs, uh, or, and those could also be line inputs. So probably what it's going to be is a line input from your um, soundboard. Um, and then it's going to let you mix that audio with the video from the cameras, because the cameras don't have microphones on them, um, and you don't really want to take audio um, from the cameras. You want to get that from somewhere else, get that from your soundboard. Um, so this is going to solve that problem for you. It's going to let you switch between your video. It's going to bring in that audio. Um, and it's going to have a few little party tricks. Like you can change, um, you know, how um, the transitions happen. So we can, you know, 
make them look um, funny if I actually turn it on. Oh, put it on auto. There we go. We're going to do that. And see, now we can do kind of like a neat little push effect if we want to. Um, or we can always just go back to the back to the straight cut in between um, if you want as well. Um, either way, so it's gonna let you do some effects, which is neat. It gives you like a dedicated fade to black button. So if you wanna show nothing for a moment, um, the audio is still gonna come through when you hit fade to black, uh, which is nice. Um, but then you can, um, you know, you can just, if you need to just show nothing for a minute, um, you can do it. They're super simple. You can throw somebody down in front of them, give them a five minute tutorial. They're gonna know how to use it. Um, so that's going to switch between your videos. That's going to do bring in your audio. It's going to solve all those problems. So right now, with just these four items, we've got two cameras, we've got a controller, and we've got our ATM Mini. We have a multi-camera, remote-controllable setup um, that is actually uh, going to be fairly easy to use. Um, you know, fairly um, almost anybody could do it once you've got it all set up. That's not really going to be very difficult to set up because it all is also going to use things that you're used to, right? This works over HDMI. Most people are used to dealing with HDMI. We know what those cables look like. We know what they can do. Um, standard warning, you can't really run HDMI successfully over like 75 feet. I've got a video about what to do if you need to do more than that, so check that out. Um, and then these cameras are going to talk to this network controller over your network. It's kind of in the name, network controller. Um, so you just set these up um, to talk to your existing um, wired network, and you will need some wired network between them. So where the cameras are, are going to need a, a network connection and some sort of video out, probably HDMI. Um, the nice part is the cameras in the controller will also work over power over Ethernet. Um, so if you want to use that Ethernet connection that you're going to have to run to the cameras to run not only your network, but you can run your power with it as well, saving you having to put, you know, um, you know, uh, standard power um, to them, you can do that as well. So here you are. So here is the basic setup that I would use um, if I were going to start from scratch or almost from scratch. Um, and you know, all I had to work with was say a computer because that's the final detail. Um, I don't have it here. You are going to need a computer because at the end of the day, what this is going to do is it's going to give you a final signal out. Um, and there's actually a USB-C on the back here um, that says webcam out. Um, it's going to give you a USB out that's going to have both your video and your audio on it that you're going to plug into your computer and your computer is going to see it just like it sees any other webcam and you can use it like any other webcam. So you can run it, you can just open up YouTube and you can go live there. You can open up Facebook page and go live from there. Um, you can open up like a Restream. If you have a Restream account, you can do that there. You can use it on Zoom. You can use it on Teams. You can use anything and anywhere that you would use um, just a normal webcam for, you can use this instead um, and your computer is just going to see it that way. Um, and then let your computer be the thing that finally streams it out um, to the rest of the world. So there you go. So here is the basic setup that I would do um, if I were starting from scratch and wanted a live stream setup um, that would let me uh, have really good quality in and of itself um, and then also give me room to build. Depending on which cameras you choose, you're probably going to be kind of at a minimum of a couple of thousand dollars, maybe up closer to three or four if you go for the more expensive cameras. Um, again, this is going to set you back about somewhere between three and five hundred dollars. This one's going to set you back three hundred dollars or up to twelve hundred dollars if you get some of the larger, more sophisticated versions of this product line. Um, you know, I've got a video comparing a couple of those if you want to see that. But if you think about what it's going to do and sort of amortize that cost over how many times are you going to use it. If you're going to use it two, three, four, five times a month um, and you're going to use it for multiple years, you know, the cost per session is actually fairly low. Um, and it really does help to just invest in something that works. The other reason I recommend this kind of setup is that it's simple, it does just work. Um, so you also have to factor in how much time are you spending, um, you know, debugging, you know, the existing systems when you've just kind of kludged it together, uh, you know, with your, maybe your laptop and a couple of random cameras you had laying around, you know, whatever. How many hours a day are you wasting on that versus this um, that you can just turn on and it works. Um, and this is basically what our setup is, except we have uh, a fancier version of this guy um, and we have more cameras. But the nice thing is when we show up on Sunday morning, we just turn it all on and it works. So 
there you go. Uh, basic live stream um, setup if you're starting from scratch. Here's where I would start. Um, I think you'll be very happy with it, um, very straightforward, and a lot of support on YouTube on how to use all of these products. All right, well, I hope this was useful and helpful to you. I always love sharing stuff like this. Um, if you do decide to buy any of these things, please check this link um, in the description below. Um, that helps if you buy it from the, off of one of those links to Amazon, helps support this channel, which I greatly appreciate. Of course, like and subscribe. And thank you for joining me. And until we see you, uh, until we see each other again, have a great day. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe, and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions of the feedback you give, so keep that coming, and I will keep making them. Thank you.